coming loose during treatment. And it's easier to place screws in the upper mechanism before cementation. Apply Sika Bond to the lower screw after cementation of lower crown, when the lower part of the mechanism is secured. Prevent the mechanism from getting in the way during delivery by holding it up and out of the way with a rubber band. Thread the rubber band halfway through the lower eyelid and collapse the extended telescoping arm into itself, keeping the mechanism very short. Next, loop both ends of the rubber band around the mechanism. Then attach both ends of the rubber band to the hook on the arch wire tubes. To keep glass ionomer out of the mechanism, place toothpaste in any open areas of the appliance's components. This includes upper tubes, upper and lower arch wire slots, and both axles. Avoid getting toothpaste inside the crowns as it may contaminate the cement and weaken the bond. Mix the cement and place it in the crowns. The crown should be one half to two thirds full with cement. It's best to use a cold slab when mixing the cement. A glass ionomer or dual cure light activated adhesive is recommended. If you're using a dual cure adhesive and are delayed a few minutes before cementation, place an orange light box over the cement filled crowns on the cold slab to keep the material from starting to cure too early because of the overhead lights. Cement the lower crowns and then cement the upper crowns with the pre-attached mechanism. Clean residual cement from the teeth using a cotton roll. Let cement cure according to manufacturer's instructions. Since the tops are cut out of the crown, you should clean off any excess cement on the occlusal surface. This will make it easier to remove the crowns later and decrease the amount of time needed for cleanup. Then, thoroughly clean the teeth of any excess adhesive, being careful to keep a smooth closed seal between the adhesive and the edge of the crown on the occlusal surface. Place the lower arch wire before removing the rubber band that holds up the mechanism. Then, draw the lower telescoping mechanism forward and align it with the lower mesial casing. Insert a screw that's been dipped in Sika Bond through the lumen into lower mesial casing. At the initial insertion, the patient may be advanced edge to edge or to a class one relationship. It's sometimes necessary to use C spacers of different sizes on each side, adding a millimeter or two to one side to correct any midline discrepancy. Advanced Sync uses C spacers specifically developed for this mechanism. If C spacers or C rings from other manufacturers are used, they will jam the mechanism and may damage the telescoping rods. The telescoping rods do not need to be disengaged in order to place the C-spacers. Simply have patient open his or her mouth, place C-spacers over the rod, then crimp with the Ormco C-spacer crimping plier. The C-spacers will slide up and down the rod. Activation and advancement will occur 6 to 12 weeks following initial insertion. For the initial activation, Use the C-spacers to move the jaw forward. To further extend the M2M mechanism and put on additional C-spacers, have the patient open his or her mouth and place new spacers over the tube closest to the lower lumen. Slide C-spacers over the rod. 
let sea spacers slide until they rest at the base of the eyelet. Crimp the spacers down with Ormco sea spacer pliers. The sea spacers are dead soft and will crimp easily. The sea spacers will slide up and down on the rod. If sea spacers no longer fit on the rod or first tube of the mechanism, remove the screw from the mesial screw housing and move it to the distal screw housing. At each activation appointment, it's important to check to see that the telescope is functioning correctly, the midlines are in their correct relation, and to see if there is an open bite in the bicuspid area. If there is an open bite in the bicuspid area, the lower first and second bicuspid brackets will need to be rebonded. You'll place these brackets lower on the teeth. Because we want the lower arch level for posterior contact when the M2M -M is removed, Watch to make sure that the cusp tips on the lower bicuspids are the same height as the cusp tips on the lower molar crowns. If the brackets are not placed low enough to achieve this cuspal relationship, an open bite can present in the area of the bicuspids. When bonding or rebonding teeth, never micro etch the teeth with the M2M telescope mechanisms in the mouth. Unscrew the mechanism from upper and lower crowns and completely remove from the mouth. The micro-etch material is so fine that it will sift into and get lodged in the telescoping tubes of the mechanism, keeping it from functioning. Ultrasound cleaning is proven incapable of removing the material. When it's time to remove the appliance, you will first remove the upper and lower arch wires, then remove the